I want to turn to um, at least uh, an on par, at least uh, uh, an event that met that standard of the rally in its significance in the final couple weeks of the campaign. That is Trump going on Rogan. Kamala could never. She could never. I bet a lot of you have listened to the Trump-Rogan interview. Uh, it's, it's quite long, so maybe some of you skipped around. I'm going to try to fly through this because Trump, on his feet with the most prominent uh, interviewer of our time, is revealed so much about himself. Uh, Rogan opens up the interview and he reveals something about what Trump reveals about the political system. Rogan opens up the interview by uh, referencing uh, Trump right before he really you know, hit the national scene as a presidential candidate. Trump, when he was launching his presidential campaign, not that long ago, whatever it was, nine years ago, going on The View. And Rogan pointed out how strange it is that he was warmly received by all those liberal women. Donald Trump is a billionaire, a real estate mogul, and a television star. But does he really want to add president of the United States to his resume? A lot of people would like him to. Please, let's find out, and please welcome my friend, Donald Trump. Hugs, kisses, Joe Behar. The audience loves him. We're so happy to have you. Whenever you're on, whenever you're on with us, we're very happy. Whenever you're on with us, we're very happy. My friend Donald Trump, that wasn't 20 years ago. That wasn't 30 years ago. That was about nine years ago when Trump started running in 2015. I love that Joe opened with this. This was so insightful because it reveals something that Trump reveals about the system which is that the system is fake. And Trump is able uniquely to reveal this fact about the system because Trump has been a celebrity since the 80s, at least. Because Trump was the toast of the town. Because Trump is not from Texas or Tennessee. Trump is a New Yorker. Trump did not come from some church movement. Trump did not come from pro-life activism. Trump did not come from any of the traditionally right-wing areas of politics. Trump was a TV star and a real estate mogul and a playboy billionaire. And New York, and not even just New York, a lot of New York still loves Trump. The liberal establishment loved him as recently as when he declared his, his candidacy for president. And then When he was running and he started to do well, and then certainly when he beat Hillary Clinton, the system had to turn him into a Nazi. So Barbara Walters, my friend, my good friend, Donald Trump, and Whoopi Goldberg there kissing him, and Joy Behar kissing him, they just had to, like robots, they just had to get the upgrade to their software. Boop, beep, boop, sorry, nope, Trump, evil now. And it all had to go away. And it it, it reveals how artificial that system is. It reveals how disingenuous those accusations about Trump, and really about all the Republicans are, because they're not just calling Trump a Nazi and the Trump rallies Nazi rallies. They did it to Mitt Romney. They did it to John McCain. They did it to George Bush. They did it to the other George Bush. They did it to Ronald Reagan. They do it to everyone. Trump just uniquely can reveal how silly that is. So then the next really revealing clip I saw from the Trump-Rogan interview, when Trump is discussing the moment he gets there into the White House, and he talks about what he first noticed. We get to the White House and now it's a little bit uh, a little bit before dark, beautiful. And we went up to the uh, president's uh, quarters, they call them the presidential quarters. And I'm standing in this beautiful hallway. I, you know, it's funny, nobody ever talks about the White House as being beautiful inside. You know, you think it's going to be everything's going to be all metal doors and stuff. It's not. It's so beautiful. I made my money largely on luxury. The hallway is like 25 feet wide. The ceiling heights are, you know, every, it's so beautiful. Beauty. Beauty. And I think he's being totally sincere here. I think he's being sincere much, if not most, if not all the time. Uh, Trump, it's sometimes his sincerity gets him in trouble a little bit because he's not uh, politic about, about the way he discusses issues. 
But here he sounds as sincere as I've ever heard him. He says, you know, first thing I noticed is just how beautiful it is. The hallways, the wood, the ornamentation. This is be- and it, beauty. It's good to be attracted to beauty. Because beauty is one of the transcendentals. Truth, goodness, and beauty. And when, when you're attracted to beautiful things, you're more likely to encounter the truth and goodness. <laughs> when you're attracted to true things, you're more likely to encounter beauty and goodness. Right? You, they, they kind of lead you one to the other. Today, the left wants us to be attracted to things that are not beautiful. They're trying to upend our standards of beauty. They're telling, trying to tell us that things that are grotesque are really beautiful. The things that are out of place are really beautiful. The, not to look at beautiful women, that's somehow sexist and misogynistic, but to look at men who dress up like women, who are grotesque caricatures of women. We're told that's actually beautiful. That, we're told that really unhealthy lifestyles are beautiful. But Trump's saying, no, 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 look, the thing that struck me that really resonated for me was beauty. Remember Trump had that great executive order, the Make Federal Buildings Beautiful Again Act, where he wanted them to have neoclassical architecture. It tells you that whatever you want to say about Trump, people always say, oh, he's defective in this area. He's defective in that area. I like him, but he's got the, you know, his apparatus is still working pretty well. If you can say, look, I just, I don't read all the political philosophy books, but I, you know, I'm attracted to beautiful things and I, I can sniff the difference between the truth and BS. And I want to do good stuff and not bad stuff. And I'm not going to allow ideologies to twist me into a pretzel to call good evil and evil good. That is a really admirable quality in politics. It's obviously served him well. That was a great clip. Now stop, ring the bell, subscribe. See you next time.